Okay, welcome back to Fast Shit Performance there. My name is Tim Davies, and today I'm back in my attack shack dropping truth bombs on your personal battlefield, helping you to win the wars you are fighting. Now, there are some wars going on in the Royal Air Force. There's a section of people who are not the happiest bunny rabbits in the box. Let's just say that. So let's have a look at the email that was sent to me multiple times, by the way. Guys, before I start, I just want to say... Um, two things really i get sent a lot of things and 90 percent, 95 percent of things that i get sent from all three services i do not put out okay fact i get sent stuff from the police as well i don't put it out a lot of it is just personal grievances we understand that so i don't do it the second thing i'm immensely proud to have served in the royal air force there's not many people that have got one of these okay i've got one of these i've got a navy one as well uh, on my on my wall over there you can't see it but there's two commissioning scrolls saying please i i put some duties on you as an officer in the royal navy and in the royal air force i spent five years in the royal navy and 15 years in the royal air force and another thing i will say strangely enough whilst i will just add to this that the person that i'm going to be reasonably critical of today is uh, mike wigston who's the chief of air staff of the royal air force now i like mike i've flown loads of hours with mike on his wing in awful weather is a great dude he really is but responsibility for this has to rest at the top if it was me i'd be taking it on my shoulder and do something about it i'm not not saying he has to do that and the reason that i want to just talk about mike very very briefly uh, i'm not getting into hating on mike at all because i don't genuinely i really like the guy i do like the guy he's a good dude um when i was in the navy and i was about to step onto the sea harrier and i was struggling with air defense by the way so i was a bit kind of like crikey you know could i actually fly the sea harrier it's gonna be an absolute nightmare uh, i teach harry now in my flight sim and it is actually quite um, a difficult aircraft initially to get your head around but after that it becomes all right um we there's about seven of us who who didn't get uh, to go to the sea harrier ocu because in 2003 the aircraft was decommissioned mike Honestly, Mike Wigson was the poster, he was the appointer at the time in the Royal Air Force, who was bringing people into the Royal Air Force. And he phoned myself up and about another six guys and said, hey, would you consider transferring across to the Royal Air Force? The, the Navy is happy for you to come, else you're going to have to go back and do helicopter training, it's going to take you ages. I said, thank you. Um, he was a squad leader, I was a, a lieutenant. I said, thank you very much. And it just so happened that when I went through the OCU on 15 Squadron, on the big jet here, Oh, that's a 12 jet there. Oh, anyway, that's a 12 squadron jet. Uh, 15 squadron jet, I think, over there on the OCU. When I went through the OCU on the airplane, it just so happened that uh, the squadron I went to was 12 squadron. This squadron here, uh, same that, that one. And that squadron was run by a guy called Mike Wigston. I'm not even joking, guys. It's in my logbook. So, I, you know, I, I flew with Mike and everything. You know what I mean? So, um, I really like the guy. I've got some stories I could tell about him. I'm not going to tell them, Okay. Big up, Mike. I'm not going not gonna to tell the stories, all right? However, so firstly, I don't want to rip the Air Force apart. I'm not prepared to do that because they gave me a 15-year career, which otherwise I wouldn't have had. I'm eternally grateful, but we do need to look at some things. We're going to start off then by sharing a screen, and we're going to have a look at the email that was sent to me. So what are we looking at then? Gents, do any of you have a pilot who is preferably not white male who would like to be in the RAF face at a press event or press release for Top Gun 2? Shy Guy gets no cakes, so Shout Quick has offer also gone out to other units. Expression of interest, director Charlie Haynes Air, media and comms, but CC Gareth and that should be me in for wider SA. Okay. You, the way you can do this, you can go CC me in for wider SA works or CC I in doesn't work, does it? So that's another way, Sarah, you can actually have a look at how you're writing that. So the grammar does offend. However, the message offends a lot more, to be fair. I think it offends a lot of us a lot more. Um, what can we really do then? Do I blame Sarah for this? No, of course not. This is not Sarah in the wrong here. Sarah could be a very young person. Just notice how I'm not misgendering they it's a complicated battleground out there isn't it i'm trying to make a youtube video i'm stumbling over whatever this person's pronouns might be bollocks to it she's a girl probably right so whatever at the moment you call yourself sarah as far as i'm concerned you're a girl i don't care so this woman here a woman adult human female let's just get that down for a start shall we oh, man how do we get ourselves into this place well and this is the problem when you do this when you invite stonewall into your military you get this level of shit okay you don't get out of it Andrew Turner, okay? And your Diversity Champions Index, is that what it is? I've got all this stuff here. Diversity's Champion Program, UK Workplace Equality Index. I'll tell you a story right now, because I'm a generous man, right? So 
I obviously run a flight school. Makes sense. You know I run a flight school because we talked about it before. And it's a virtual one. And it's in the virtual skies on a server. Two servers, in fact, in North America. I've got about 200 pilots. Some pilots are actually in the Royal Air Force already holding on the long holds that they've got, unfortunately. They come fly with me and I teach them. But I will not teach them when they're on an active flying training course. It's just an agreement I have with the service. I'm not prepared to do that. So if they are flying in the Royal Air Force, then they go and they leave my school and they go somewhere else. Anyway, this, the teaching's based on 4 Squadron here and, and 2-8 Squadron and all that kind of stuff. A bit of OCU work as well. Teach F-18, F-5, um, F-16, AV-8B. Got Paul Tremelling on pretty soon. Actually, he's going to teach us to fly Harriers. Just released his book. Okay. Um, fight Pilot, I think. Har fight Pilot, or How to Be a Fight Pilot, or Harrier, How to Be a Fight Pilot. He's going to come and talk to us. Lovely bloke. Anyway, so we were all flying the night, and one of the young chaps on there, I do have young chaps on there um, from about 20 upwards, he said that his, one, his mother had just won an award. I've been flying this guy for about two years. I said, oh, what did she win an award for? He said, oh, it was um, BAME, local BAME business woman of the year. I said, oh, that's interesting. So is your mum a black woman? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, she's a black woman, actually. We come out of, I think it was sort of like North Africa, Uganda or something like that. I said, are you a black dude then? He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm a young black guy in, in a London. He's in inner London, actually. I said, I didn't realise that. He's like, oh, no, that's fine, yeah. Now, the great thing about my server is I've never seen a single face of anyone on it. They've seen my face because of these kind of videos. That's There's no judgment. There's nothing like that, guys. That's how diverse and inclusive my server is. No one's seen anyone. People have got false names on there, and they just fly with each other because they're professionals, and they're trying to increase the ability of something that they're doing. Before I go on, okay, because I'm in danger of getting wound up by this thing here. I used to tell people when they were flying this aircraft up here, oh God, oh, this aircraft here, the Hawk T1 and the T2 down here. When I was an instructor on those aircraft, I used to say to young people that were students, this aircraft doesn't care about your gender, sex, or race. Doesn't care. It cares about one thing. It cares about your ability. Okay, and if you're not good enough, it's going to spread you over, over a mountainside or over a lake or something like that. Because okay? it's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. It doesn't care. And what I'm alluding to there, unless we actually bring in the best people, you will end up killing them. It doesn't matter. So what we're going to talk about today, then, let's share another screen, shall we? So let's talk then about what diversity actually is, because I want to get this defined. I had an argument with them. Um, I think he was a man, uh, I'll say a boy in a man's body. He was uh, an army officer last year at some point. And one of the things I wish I clarified with him, it was, um, he was saying I was transphobic and I wasn't, uh, it was easy for me to say that, of course, isn't it? One thing I wish I clarified with him when I was arguing was what his definition of a woman was. Because mine was an adult human female, and I think he was making that stuff up as he went along. Diversity then, what is diversity? Let's just clarify what diversity is before we talk about it, right? So the state of being diverse, a bit of variety, that's what we say. Um, the practice of or quality of including or involving people from a range of different social or ethnic backgrounds and of different genders, sexual orientation, uh, sexual orientation, et cetera, et cetera. So we define that, okay? We define what that is. Thomas Sowell is um, a, a, an, econo an economist. He's a prolific author. I've read, I don't know how many of his books now, Intellectuals and Race. I've read Basic Economics. I've read loads of his stuff, okay? Loads and loads of his stuff. He's a good dude. He's a very interesting dude. I want you to just listen to this little clip and then we're gonna move on. Once again, Intellectuals and Race. The key word among advocates of multiculturalism became diversity. Ah, yes. Sweeping claims for the benefits of demographic and cultural diversity have prevailed without a speck of evidence being asked for or given. Name a few institutions in which diversity is championed without, so, without evidence. Gosh, the question would be, name one way, well, that isn't the case. Uh, I would say the whole Ivy League, uh, Stanford, uh, Berkeley. Corporate America? Yes. It, it, it's, really, it's really miraculous almost. I mean, I can't think of a word that has gained such widespread use and which is utterly unchallenged without one speck of evidence. If you look at societies that are diverse, they have all they can do to avoid uh, bl mutual bloodshed. I mean, India, for example, is very diverse. And, and you know, the-, the, the It bar barely coheres as a nation. So. That, that's right. Now, well, I don't think we're really gonna t sit here and, and discuss what diversity is, but I just want you to, this is how I feel about diversity. My argument with diversity, especially in meritocratic hierarchical structures such as the military is, why do you actually want that? There's actually a very interesting quote from um, from Thomas Sowell down here, if I just scroll down to it. 
And it, it makes me, every time I read it, I think, crikey, yeah, it's interesting. And it says, it's not been our diversity, but our ability to overcome the problems inherent in diversity and to act together as Americans, that has been our strength. So for me, all I'm trying to say when I when I share this, because obviously people are going to call me racist right now, and incidentally, guys, I don't come onto YouTube in front of 26,000 subscribers or risk my business training 200 people or, or the fact that, you know, I, I might want a traditional employment in the future if I thought I was a racist, okay? And genuinely, I don't think I'm a racist or transphobic and, I, and I, I'm a massive supporter of women, as people know, because my family is all women, okay? So I'm here just to saying, all I'm saying with the Royal Air Force is when we do this, we have to take great care and it seems that the Royal Air Force isn't doing that. It isn't taking great care in what it's doing. Now, I think I know why that is, okay? I'm... I think I know why it's not taking great care in what it's doing. I think I know why it's running ahead of itself and it's tripping up and it's looking pretty bad. So what we're just going to quickly do is just leap in and have a look at some things. And the first thing we're going to look at, guys, is just to set ourselves straight with what is the uh, proportion of diverse... Oh, this, okay, I don't like using the term BAME. I don't like using the term BAME because it's black, Asian, minority, ethnic, and then it's white people. So there couldn't be anything really, could there, more... Um, divisive than that and that's the whole problem with inclusion and diversity is anything but isn't it it's it's um it's nothing inclusive because we just put people like the labor party you put them into little boxes don't you, you say you can't say well i'm a yugoslav you know you know mate you're not your bane well hang on a second i'm not bane mate i'm you know oh i'm from north africa no no you're bane but that guy's completely different to me no 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 what are you talking about you're bane it's horrible it really is you're just saying look you're a you're a black woman it's like what about what 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 shade of black am i i mean what is this black how have we divided six billion people into six skin colors and why would you do that i, I just genuinely don't know unless you have an agenda of course and i think people do i'm not saying the royal air force has an agenda i just think the royal air force is a bit stupid in this and it's being led probably by stonewall and it gets itself in too deep and how do you get rid of stonewall now i mean you are in trouble really so anyway let's look at this shall we really um so really, uh, in 2018, and stats, recent stats have been harder to come by, but so we've got 2018, 13.8% of the UK population from a minority ethnic background, with London having 40%, which we know, of course, is population from the black, Asian, minority ethnic background. From now on, we're going to just call them um, minority ethnics or ethnic minorities, okay? Because they are a minority in what is a, a white, predominantly white country. The United Kingdom is a, is a white country. This is a white country. 86% uh, people in the country are white. That's fine. It's just this. It doesn't matter whether we, it's just what we call a fact. Um, so let's, so we know now it's 13 point, was that 13.6 guys? 13.8, uh, happy. So it's 13.8. Now we're going to have a look at the percentage of in the military. Cause I thought, well, uh, that's, I thought the military was made up of this and I was wrong actually, which is fine. Cause I always try and challenge myself a little bit. Come on Davies, you're not always right mate. Not always right, just mostly. I'm joking. Jeez, everyone's so delicate. So in the armed forces then, here's the ethnicity breakdown in the armed forces. And it's quite an interesting one. I'll make it bigger for you. I'll go small. Hello, I'm small, I'm in the window. And now what we're doing is scroll down this and we'll just have a look at what we're looking at then. So armed forces, scroll down. Now, uh, 2018, my, people from ethnic minorities, this is a government webpage, 2.5% officers, 2.4 regular armed forces as compared. So it hasn't changed much in the officer rank. 8.8 uh, from 2012, so in 10 years, 10 years, six years, it's gone up a little bit. But this is the interesting thing. This is the thing that got me here. I started looking at this and thinking, oh, I think I know why the RF is pushing this so strongly. Because they're failing. Now, personally, I don't call this failure. I say that this is what it is. It just so seems that more minority ethnics want to join the British Army uh, or the, 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 the Royal Navy, Royal Marines, than they do the Royal Air Force. It just is one of those things. So what will happen is you'll get, I'm going to have to put glass on, guys, because I really struggle sometimes. I'm 47 years old, I struggle reading this stuff now. So what you're finding is that when the Chief of General Staff is sat around with, the, um, uh, with all the bosses of all the services, they're all looking at Mike Wigston and they're going, what is up with your service, Mike? How come we are not attracting ethnic minorities into the Royal Air Force? He's the he's being singled out in the room, and he has to do something about this now. Hence the Stonewall thing. Hence the uh, Diversity Champions Program, the UK Workplace Equality Index, and all that kind of absolute rubbish that seems to have got itself into the Royal Air Force. And the truth is, if you if you think about, okay, so he's probably going through some pretty harsh professional banter. When they're, when they're having all these meetings. And he's being told, do something about it, Big Mike. He's like, I will. I'm going to do something about it. 
And uh, so inside the service, what he's done, unfortunately, and it's probably all trickling down. That's normally how it works. And of course, when you couple this as well with the promotion system and the virtue signaling of these these people in the military, sometimes that that feel that they feel that they're champions of social justice and they're unable to do the reading around the edges. They don't know who Thomas Sowell is or John McWhorter or anyone like that. They haven't got a bloody clue. And when I was in the service, I didn't either. Why? Because I was really busy flying airplanes. It was a really complicated job. And you know what? They kept trying to kill me the whole time. And you think I'm going to go home and go, you know what? I'm going to invest myself in, in looking at diversity and inclusivity. No, what better way to do it in the military is to put a lanyard around your neck with rainbow colors on it and some nice badges and to go, yes, I support all genders and run around like that as if that's actually appropriate in the workplace in the first first place because i don't think it is so there is that side to it uh anyway so i think i'm a what am i now i'm probably a misogynist now transphobe homophobe maybe and i don't know actually i'm probably a lot more should we go back to those figures again let's go back to those figures again actually i just want to i don't want this to go on too long i need to wrap this up the british army seems to be attracting a lot of uh, minority ethnics and it seems to be up there around about, what, 12.9%. Remember what we said the average was for the, the UK, 13.6%. Here's the problem that not very clever people in senior positions in the British military have not thought about. When the government sets targets, and the government does have targets, by the way, you can just type in um, military ethnic minority targets, UK government, and you'll get a web page up. I did have it up, and I seem to have lost it. I do apologise. When you have targets and you're very senior in the military and someone saying let's make this happen can we make this happen yeah and you're like yeah definitely make this happen so then you're like well i can't use quotas i'm not allowed to use quotas as such so i'll just tell people you know what i mean if there are like some black people or some women applying can you get them in what happens unfortunately with this guys two things firstly you create a victimhood narrative within those people that you well, there's lots of things that happen within those people that you're employing, of course, because they think, have I just been accepted into the military because I'm an ethnic minority or because I'm a woman? Or have they accepted me because of my ability? So the truth is they will never ever know, but they will always have that doubt in their mind. And obviously the other side of it is anyone that's already in the military will think that they were selected because we're in a time where we're trying to drag ethnic minorities and women into the military to create a, a, a representation of the demographic uh, outside the military, which is you shouldn't need to do, by the way. A military should be representative of the population it serves. The police force should, not the military. The military should just be the most, I'm not saying the police force aren't this, the military should just be the most capable people you have at enacting significant violence and, and warfare that you can find. It's always been that way with militaries. Now, yes, of course, a lot more warfare is done with computers and all that kind of stuff now. So we don't necessarily need the strongest, physically strongest people, physically strongest people. But of course, we do still need quality people. Are you telling me then that if you're prioritizing or, or limiting other races, that you are getting those people in? Now, the argument for that, of course, is, well, we need to show people that the military is, of course, um, it is open and full and you, you can full of all sorts of different ethnicities and, and, and races. And therefore, how do we do that? Well, we push them to the front, don't we? And we, we say, Hey guys, you know, you're a black dude. Can you go to the top gun premier, you know, or black woman? Can you go to the top, top gun premier? And that's what the military did. And that's the danger because then you get me putting this out on YouTube and it's making you look like a bit silly because I don't think you thought about it. And the second bit, the second bit we're talking about them. So when you look at these stats, guys, fly jets long enough you're going to need wearing glasses in the end and only they only correct a little bit and it's more kind of it's not they don't correct that much to be fair but army 12.9 percent when you get to 13.6 percent do you stop recruiting ethnic minorities holler at a brother okay come on what are you going to do because if you still do it and you take that figure past 13.6 i'll make another video you know what are you doing guys come on i thought i thought the whole point was you want it to mirror society and now it doesn't, does it? What if the British Army became forty percent, forty percent ethnic minorities, for example? Do you think? I mean, come on, you, you've got to think these things through. You've got to have a plan. You've got to have a plan if you're going to mirror society. You've got to have a plan to mirror society. And now the problem is you've got quotas. Quotas are not fair. We know that. We start talking about discrimination now, and it becomes very difficult. Now, here's the thing as well. On my, I get, I get emails from loads of people. And I don't think these people are lying because they're, they're genuine. Well, they're genuine people. They wouldn't write to me otherwise because I wouldn't, I wouldn't tolerate their emails. And in my flight school, we have a section for people that want to enter the military. Okay. And they, they go in there and I, I advise and other guys come in. The glasses just level them out. I have self-leveling glasses. And we, we advise these people and everything else. Now, 
uh, in there, what I get is continuous stories of a young a white dude. There is actually, I've got um, some young, uh, I don't even know what heritage they are. They're, they're ethnic minorities, but they're in there as well. And they are telling me, look, we put an application in after this guy, and we're on the same air squadron. We put it in, I put an application to join the military four months after this white guy in the conversation here. And I was, I got my, I got my reply back like a month later and I got my date a month later. And that white, that white guy, he got his back two months after my date and his date now is later on. So what I'm saying is that when a young, now there's no confirmation of this, but it seems that when there's, if there, if there are as an ethnic minority or a woman applying at the same time as a white man, it just seems that that white man's application is not getting the same attention. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's pretty shameful, isn't it? What's that young white dude done? Apart from he was just born white and he's born as a dude. And is it fair to discriminate against him for that? He didn't have a choice in it. If we reverse this guys, and we look at that email again, you know, what I'm going to do it now. Don't you? And then I'm going to stop because no one's going to watch a 25 minute video from a white guy talking about diversity. Are they? Why would they? Let's put different words in it. Do any of you have a pilot who is preferably not a black woman? I mean, that's awful, awful. <laughs> you can't even make it up. It's, it is that bad. Now, in one of my comments, guys, I did get someone go, oh, but Tim, you can't be racist towards white people. Yeah, that was said. You can't be racist towards white people. Uh, there's, I mean, that, to me, that's fine, whatever. Let's um, finish this now, guys. And I, just, I literally just want this one, one last page for you here because um, I do believe what's happened now from my contacts that have spoken to me, multiple contacts spoken to me. Apologies gone out, okay? And um, so what's happened is RAF apologises. When I read this, it doesn't look like the RAF has apologised. It looks like the Ministry of Defence says here, Ministry of Defence apologised. Listen to the words used. The language should not have been used, and we apologise for any offence caused. So it's not an apology, is it? It's like, oh, we got caught. The language should not have been used. It's not saying this behavior is abhorrent, okay? And also, guys, I don't, it's nothing to do with Sarah, nothing to do with the other guy mentioned there, okay? I genuinely don't think, I think this has been pushed from high. Genuinely, those people I would not have. It's a throwaway email, probably a Friday afternoon. Hey, guys, anyone got copy and pasted probably from a senior's email? No one's hating on anyone here. Genuinely, no one's hating on here. And I just want to bring one thing in here, guys, because I do think we've got a bit of an issue in the UK. I've mentioned it before. Um, it's personal to me because I've got a nephew who's very young. He's about eight. And one day this may well affect him. And uh, it's this here that I'm just going to bring up, which is, here we go, a BBC article. All right, look, the taboo about it doesn't go to university. So it is actually young, white, working class poor boys are not going to university all the stats are down here guys there's other articles you can read about this all right so when we when we are talking about discrimination let's leave the video here It'll be 25 minutes when we are talking about discrimination we just have to remember that discrimination is is, a, is bad for everyone it's, you can't just put it down to we mustn't discriminate against uh, ethnic minorities all right i know it's a bit of a throwaway video this really if it is that you're trying to get cognitive diversity that's understandable but don't try and tell me that all black people think the same therefore you must mix all black people in with white people it, no it, individuals i've said this before everyone treat them as individuals you bunch of idiots, okay, at the top of the service here. Let's stop virtue signaling at all levels, especially in that wing commando group captain level and the, the bloody squadron leaders who are trying to get ahead by throwing an LGBT party on a on a Friday afternoon of handing out lanyards. Stop that shit. Okay. Let's all be let's all be professional in a professional service because what you do reflects on us veterans as well. In the same way that what I'm doing is reflecting on you. And let's remember that. That's what the team is about. I might have served, might have left about three years ago, guys, but I still deeply care about the Royal Air Force and the people in it. All right? Genuinely. And the Royal Navy, of course, because in it. And I'm very privileged to have served. I'm just saying, we understand it was a bit of an error. We all understand that. It was poor wording. It's not racist. All right? I'm sorry I said that. It's not sexist. All right? I'm sorry I said that. But I'm in the business of clicks now. So I'm going to amplify whatever message you put out. That's my job to do that, right? That's my job. That's what I do now. That's what YouTube is about. It's entertainment, guys. You know how it, you know how it works. All right? And if I've got a YouTube channel or a social media presence that's more powerful than the Royal Air Force is, then you're doing something very badly wrong. Don't blame me and a messenger, all right? Just stop being a bunch of dick lords. You know I love you, really. Tim Davies, Farship Performance.